Hello everyone, my name is Xavier Lemijon and I'm going to present a joint work with Stéphane Gobert and Nicolas Vandam that is entitled No self component Barrier in the Point Method is Strongly Polynomial. So I start by recalling some elements of the theory of self component barriers that was introduced by Nesterov and Emirovsky in the 90s. So basically, you consider a convex programming problem, you uh, consider a convex body K, and you want to imagine to minimize a certain um, linear objective function, c scalar x over this uh, convex body. So this theory consists in adding a penalization to the objective function by a so-called self-concordant barrier f. So in particular, this function will be strictly convex over um, the convex body and will go to plus infinity when x goes to the boundary. And you see that there is an extra parameter in the objective function, eta, uh, whose role is to weight uh, the importance of the original objective function with respect to uh, the, penalize, the penalization. So this uh, gives rise to a family of strictly convex programs, CVX of eta. And uh, thanks to that, we can define the central pass, which is a parameter a parametric curve that maps eta to the point C of eta, where C of eta is defined as the optimal solution of um, CVX of eta. This optimal solution, of course, is unique thanks to the property of the self component barrier. So here is an illustration of uh, a central pass in a very simple case when K is um, a polytop and we want to minimize the altitude uh, of the points of this polytop. And as you can see on the picture, uh, when eta goes to plus infinity, the central pass converges to an optimal solution of the convex program. And this pass actually starts from a special point that is called the analytic center, which is the admin of the uh, barrier function over the convex body. So interior point methods that relies on these um, uh, self-concordant barriers um, consist in following approximately the central pass up to large values of the parameter eta. So in more details, it describes a piecewise trajectory that is uh, controlled, well-controlled and um, included in a, a neighborhood, a well-controlled neighborhood of the central pass. Every iteration exploits a descent direction, and uh, at every iteration, we update the parameter eta. We are sure to update the parameter eta into a value eta prime, where the ratio eta prime over eta is always bounded away by constants uh, strictly less than one. So there are various iteration schemes uh, to implement these interior point methods, like short step, long step, predictor corrector methods, but they all fit this description. And one of the most important results in the theory of Nesterov and Emirovsky is the following. If you want to get an epsilon approximation of the optimal solution of uh, the convex program, the total number of iterations needed is polynomial in, uh, in the precision. That is, it is in capital O of log over one over epsilon. So there is an extra dependency in uh, the so-called complexity value, theta f, of the barrier f. As we shall see, this is a constant that is attached to every uh, barrier, self concordant barrier. So, interestingly, uh, when we specialize uh, this bound to linear programming, uh, that is, when in the case where k is a polyhedron defined by a system of affine inequalities, ax less than b, we can show that the total number of iterations needed to solve the LP in an exact way is uh, bounded by a uh, big O of uh, the square root of theta f time, times L, where L is the bit size of the input. And to show it, it suffices to uh, take uh, sufficiently source pre precision, epsilon, um, in terms of the bit size, so something that is one over an, an exponential of the bit size, and then so I'm applying some rounding method in order to jump to the close enough points of the central pass to an optimal phase. Uh, so, uh, a famous example of uh, self concordant barrier, especially for LP, is the logarithmic barrier. It consists in um, taking uh, the sum of the, the, the opposite of the sum of the logarithm of uh, the bi minus aix, uh, which uh, every logarithm corresponds to penalization of the ith constraints. So, we can show that the complexity value of this barrier is equal to the number of inequalities in the system, that is m. And in this way, we recover the usual square root of m times l bound uh, that is known for interior point methods for LP. Uh, as you know, there is a famous open question 
open essentially since the introduction of the simplex method by Zonsich uh, on the complexity of linear programming. Whereas we can, we, can, we can solve linear programming in polynomial time, we don't know whether we can solve linear programming in strongly polynomial complexity. So this problem that is listed by Smell among these is, is, uh, is problems for the 21st century uh, is still open. And um, let me recall what strongly polynomial means. Uh, it means that uh, the algorithm in polynomial time, but on top of that, the number of arithmetic operations is bounded by a polynomial that only depends on the number of numerical entries and independently of the bit size of uh, the numerical entries. And so a very sensible goal is to uh, find maybe an entire point methods that would be strongly polynomial. The reason is that these methods are probably polynomial time. And in practice, they are very, very fast. And it was noted, for instance, by Concio in some survey paper that the number of iteration is almost constant, independent of the problem dimension. So this makes interior point methods a very good candidate to be a strongly polynomial algorithm for LP. So let me briefly uh, review the recent advances in interior point methods for linear programming. So in this review, I will focus on uh, the bounds on the number of iterations and not on the total runtime of iteration. There, are, there have been recently a, re a huge amount of works on um, the, the, the very fast algorithm to make iterations um, of uh, in, in the point methods. Uh, but here I will focus only on the number of uh, iterations. And so uh, this, uh, the bound for this number of iteration is basically this one, um, theta f square root of theta f times L. And so uh, concerning the parameter L, uh, that most of the time is actually dominating, uh, certainly one of the most promising lines of research is, uh, was introduced by Vavesi Sandier in the 90s. It is called the layered least squares steps. So it consists in using some refined directions, descent directions, to improve to follow the central pass. So initially, it applied only to the log barrier central pass, even though there have been some extensions to other barriers with special properties. And it consists in doing faster steps uh, along straight parts of the central pass. And um, here is the best known bounds for these kind of methods, you see that it's up to polynomial factors in N. It depends in a logarithmic way uh, in the condition number chi star uh, of, um, of the matrix A of the constraints. So I refer to this um, work of Dadouche and his co-authors for more details. But in parallel, there have been people who have been trying to uh, build bad central pass, especially for the logarithmic barrier. So uh, it started with a work of design, his co-authors, where they consider a Clementi cube. A Clementi cube is a famous counterexample to the polynomiality of some simplex pivot rule for the simplex method, where they added many, many redundant inequalities. And in this way, they could bend the central pass in such a way to visit the neighborhoods of every vertex of the cube. And so it performed certainly an, an exponential number of iteration, but the number of numerical entries was already exponential. So uh, more recently, uh, linear programs with very large coefficients have been considered and they have been analyzed by two of you coming from tropical geometry. And in this way, Alain Bijon, Ben Chibol, Gobert, and Josephine could show that in the case of the logarithmic barrier, uh, the worst case number of iteration of any interior point barrier uh, is exponential in the dimension, which proves that these methods based on the logarithmic barrier can't be strongly polynomial. So perhaps it's done, it's dead for um, uh, the logarithmic barrier, but there are also other barriers. So this leads to another line of research where people have been trying to improve this parameter theta f and to improve barriers. So uh, there have been very nice results by Bubek and Eldan, refined by Chevy and then Lee and Yu, where they prove that some barriers, entropic and universal barriers, are, have an optimal complexity value theta f that is equals to the dimension of the problem. OK, unfortunately, these barriers can't be very exploited for having computational interior point methods. They are difficult to compute with. And so there was a breakthrough done by Lee and Sidford where they managed to uh, get a polynomial time computable barrier with an almost optimal 
complexity value theta f. So their barriers consist in a weighted version of the logarithmic barriers, where the weights are um, uh, a local importance scores based on the so-called Lewis weights. And in this way, they manage to obtain, uh, to improve the, some complexity bond uh, on harder, on, on, on well-studied com combinatorial optimization problems. Uh, so the natural question is whether all these improvements on in the theory of self concordant barrier could help to get some strong polynomial complexity algorithms uh, or interior point methods at least for linear programming. And uh, we answer negatively to this question in this work. We show that most self concordant interior point barriers is uh, interior point method. Sorry, is strongly polynomial, and so we prove that in a constructive way. Uh, by exhibiting a counterexample that is an LP in dimension n with two n inequalities, and this LP is parameterized by a certain um, scalar t, um, t that is greater than one, and this um, this parameter uh, is involved in the numerical entries of the LP, and we actually show that when this parameter t is large enough. Every interior point method based on self cochronon barrier and that progress in a multiplicative neighborhood of the central pass uh, requires at least uh, two to the n minus one iterations to solve the LP. So here we use multiplicative neighborhoods. So this is a family of neighborhood uh, that's, uh, which is defined in this way and that cover all known methods, uh, all known neighborhoods uh, described in the literature as far as we know. So this is an illustration of this uh, contour example. Here you see that this is the shape of the feasible region when t equals three and when t equals 20. And here are some central paths for various barriers for the logarithmic barrier in orange and for the barriers of Lee and Sitford in a green to blue, okay? And you see that when t is increased, these central paths get closer and closer and actually they, are, they consist of several straight uh, segments. And it turns out that we show what we show is that the number of these straight paths is exponential. Okay. Um, interestingly, this counter example is reminiscent of uh, the, 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 the instances of linear program that were considered to exhibit some exponential behavior of the simplex method. So most of these instances are combinatorial cubes, that is, that are combinatorially equivalent to uh, cubes. And we show actually that when t is large enough, the feasible region of our counterexample is a combinatorial cube, is a combinatorial cube as well. Uh, and actually, this combinatorial property is quite important in the structure of the central pass. So it turns out that the central pass of our counterexample consists of two copies of the central pass of the counterexample, but in dimension n minus one, that are close to two special facets of the counterexample that corresponds in terms of a cube to the top and to the bottom of um, facets of the cube somehow. So these are depicted in, in blue here and in red. And there is an extra straight part in between. And this is how we uh, get the uh, exponential bound. So here is the outline of uh, the presentation. First, I'm going to uh, show you how we can analyze central pass by considering the log limit of the central pass. Then I will go uh, into more details in the complexity analysis, and I will conclude by some remarks. So looking at the contrary example that I showed you before, uh, we basically want to analyze the limit behavior of the LP when t goes to plus infinity. So a basic fact is that the entries of the vertices are actually rational functions in the parameter t. And so every such entry has an asymptotic that is quite simple. It is a theta of t to the alpha for some real alpha, or possibly equal to minus infinity if the entry is equal to zero. Um, and so in order to analyze this LP, a possible solution is to rescale um, uh, the, 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 the feasible region by the map log t, which is just defined as the logarithm in base t, that is the ratio of the logarithm divided by the logarithm of t, and takes the limit uh, when t uh, goes to plus infinity. And in this way, we will obtain something that only depends on these asymptotics alpha. And this is exactly what tropical geometry is about. So in more details, uh, if we consider the log limits of the feasible regions of the LP that I show you just before, that is the limit when t uh, 
goes to plus infinity of the image by log t of uh, this feasible region p of t, we obtain something, a set, that is uh, actually, that has a lot of structure and it is known to be a tropical polyton. So here is the illustration on the counterexample that I showed you before. Uh, so as you can see, this set is non-convex, but still it is it has some structure, like it is a tropically convex set. I won't go into further details, but what is interesting also is that it's comes some more piecewise linear, that is, it is a union of finitely many convex polyhedra. And this fact is actually more general. Existence of log limits extends to uh, semi echelonic sets as shown by work by Alessandro Prigou. Uh, so here is an example of the log limit of the parametric family of spectrahedra. Spectrahedra is involved in semi-definite programming. And these limits are well structured polyhedral complexities, that is, unions of finitely many uh, polyhedra. So the natural question is now, does the central pass as a log limit to who? And what is it? Because if it has such a log limit, maybe we can use this log limit to study the asymptotic behavior of the, of the central pass when t goes to plus infinity. And what we know so far is that for some special barriers, and in the case of linear programming, yes, the central pass has such a log limit. In the case of the logarithmic barrier, uh, it was shown by uh, Alain Mijon, Ben Chibol, Gobert, and Josfig that uh, we have a precise characterization of the log limits of the central pass. And the proof heavily relies on the fact that the central pass is an algebraic curve. And in a somewhat similar way, um, uh, that characterization were extended to the anthropic barrier by Alavijon, Aznak, Gobert, and Hamdi, uh, thanks to the very special form of the barrier. In particular, it, was, it is the anthropic barrier is just a Kramer transform of the characteristic function of uh, the feasible region. And so it is in particular definable in some O minimal structure, which is a quite strong property. Okay, so in both situations, the same characterization applies to the log limit. This is the same object. And what we show in this paper is that actually we can generalize this characterization to any self concordant barrier and to convex programming as well. So uh, in more details, consider now a parametric family of convex programs, CVX, that depend on the parameter T, that is that we minimize some linear function CT over some family of convex bodies, KT. Then what we show is that under some reasonable assumptions that are satisfied, of course, in the case of LP, the log limit of the central pass of these parametric convex programs always exists and is the same whatever barrier we choose uh, to define the central pass. Uh, these assumptions are the following. So of course, we will assume that CT has non-negative entries and KT is included in a positive order. These are pretty reasonable assumptions. And we will also um, um, assume that CT has a log limit that is uh, denoted by gamma and that the rate of the convergence is one over log T. And similarly, the family of convex bodies KT has a log limit K and that the rate of convergence is one over log T. And we also assume that K is a similarly linear set that is a union of finitely many polyhedra. So as we have shown, these assumptions are valid in a quite general uh, setting. Uh, then the limit uh, that we call the tropical central pass is defined in the following way. It is a parametric curve gamma defined as a supremum of the point that belongs to the log limits and that satisfies these inequalities, which corresponds to a tropical sublevel set. Here, uh, you, you suppose that the maximum of the gamma 1 plus x1 up to gamma n plus xn is less than minus lambda, okay, where lambda is the parameter of the curve. The supremum here means that we consider the greatest points in this set um, for the component-wise order of the points over Rn. And our result is the, is the following. If you take any barrier and that you denote CT the central pass, the, correspond, the corresponding central pass for uh, the program CVXT, then when T goes to plus infinity, the family of the, uh, the log limits of the central pass uniformly converge to the tropical central pass. So here is an illustration of this phenomenon. So here are the log the image under log T uh, of the central pass that I showed you before. 
uh, in, in, in the previous part of the talk. Uh, for various barriers, of course, for the logarithmic barrier and for the barriers of Lee and Sitford. And in purple, you have uh, this piecewise linear curve, which is a tropical central pass. And as you can see, when we increase T, then this logarithm of the central pass goes closer to the, to the tropical central pass. And the idea of the proof is actually quite simple. The analysis of self concordant barrier central pass heavily relies on the notion of local norms. That is, that rather than considering the Euclidean norm, we are going to use the, the Hessian H of X of the barrier function F at the point X. So this gives rise to a family of local norms. Okay, and actually, these local norms are involved in the definition of self coconut barriers. Uh, barrier self coconut barrier f is just a C2 function such that it goes to plus infinity when x goes to the boundary of the feasible set. Uh, the Hessian is positive uh, definite for any points and it changes in a smooth way. And uh, these supremum of the Newton step of the barrier f at x taken in local norm. Uh, is finite, and this corresponds to the definition of the complexity value of the barrier function. So this is a quite technical, uh, but also informal definition, but there is a very important property, and this is the key property that we use to uh, get our uh, convergence results um, uh, of self component barriers. It is the following. Take a point on the central pass of the barrier F. Uh, First, uh, the, 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 the ball for the local norm at x of radius 1, which is referred to as the Dickin ellipsoid, is, can be shown to be included in the, the whole feasible region. And another property is that if you look at only the part of the feasible region that is below with respect to the objective function uh, to this point of the central pass, then a dilated uh, ball, still for the local norm, at the point at, of the central pass x, but with a largest radius that depends on the complexity value, contains all these sub-level sets right here. And this is actually how we can show that any barrier behaves essentially as the logarithmic barrier. More specifically, we show that the Hessian uh, is somehow approximated by the Hessian diagonal of one over x squared of the logarithmic barrier for the positive orders. So it looks like somehow, even though there are various barriers, they are approximately all the same somehow from the interior point method perspective. So now this leads to uh, the complexity analysis by itself. Um, so, as we have seen before, the logarithm, the log limit of the central pass always exists and coexists with the tropical central pass for all self component barriers. So, the next step of the proof is the following. We actually extend this convergence result to the neighborhood of the central pass. Uh, and then, by using the fact that the tropical central pass, as, we, as you have seen on the pictures, is a piecewise linear curve, we get some complexity lower bounds for linear programming for interrupted methods for linear programming. And finally, we build a nice linear program, a nice meaning that the tropical central pass is very, very bad with an exponential number of segments. So um, first, we show that uh, the multiplicative neighborhood that I introduced before actually all collapse when we take the logarithmic limit of them to uh, the tropical central pass with a rate that is one of our logos. So the definition of this multiplicative neighborhood is quite simple, but uh, so it contains all uh, the neighborhoods that are described in the literature. So especially the neighborhoods of the log central pass, that is the log barrier central pass. Uh, so they are basically um, um, different neighborhoods that depends on the kind of norms that we use, L2 or semi-norm L minus infinity. And we also show that uh, the, the the neighborhoods that are used for more general uh, barrier methods uh, are also included in such neighborhoods, such multiplicative neighborhoods. So in summary, when we take T large enough, what we can show is that the image by log T of the trajectory followed by the entire open method can be made arbitrarily close to the central pass, okay? Tropical central pass. 
And as uh, Alain Mijon and Shimol Gobert and Josephine showed previously, in the case of linear program, the central pass, on top of being a piecewise linear curve, has a special structure of being a sequence of finitely many tropical segments. And on top of that, if you approximate, if you use any sequence of P segments whose image by log T is close enough to the tropical central pass, then the number of segments, a P, should be bigger than the number of tropical segments in the tropical central pass. So I won't go into the details of uh, defining tropical segments. Just keep in mind that these are very special piecewise linear curves. Uh, these are not straight segments. They, 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 they can be made of the different straight uh, segments like that here in dimension two. And uh, what we show is the following general theorem, the general um, lower bound. If you consider a, segment, a sequence of segments contained in the multiplicative neighborhood of the central pass of uh, uh, the, con the, the convex program CVXT that starts from a certain value, objective, uh, the starts from a certain value and goes to another value along the central pass, then provided that he is large enough, this sequence of segments contains at least as many tropical segments in uh, the, 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 the piece of the tropical central pass between these uh, log T, V under bar, and V upper bar. So here is an illustration on the counter example. So here uh, in red and in blue, red, blue, and so on and so forth, you have the different uh, tropical segments that consist of the central pass. And the theorem shows that actually the number, the number of iterations to go to a value close to that to uh, a value close to that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven iterations. So if we apply that to uh, the counterexample of uh, the paper, uh, we can actually characterize in a good way the log limits of the feasible region by the following uh, inequalities. Here, this V symbol corresponds to the maximum of uh, two uh, real. And uh, by definition, the point of the tropical central pass of this uh, linear program is just defined as the greatest point with respect to the um, component-wise order that satisfies this bunch of inequalities, Tcxn and xn less than uh, minus lambda. This is the part that corresponds to the sublevel set of the objective function. And so uh, for, um, for uh, consistency, I will, uh, then I will index the tropical central pass by the dimension, because as we shall see, that tropical central pass has actually an inductive structure. Uh, it actually consists of three parts, the first parts, the first and the last parts being built from the same tropical central pass, but for the counter example in dimension n minus one, plus an extra part. So let us illustrate the structural lemma. Here is uh, the, 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 the value of the tropical central pass for the contour example in dimension two, like here, it is in blue, depicted in blue. And here are the values for the contour example in dimension three. And so it consists of a first part here, and you see that the first part here on the coordinate x1, x3 precisely match the cent tropical central pass of the contour example in dimension two, okay? Next, we have an extra part that corresponds to a tropical segment. And finally, there is a last part that corresponds to a shifted um, central pass of uh, in dimension two, tropical central pass in dimension two. And so at the end, if we denote by gamma n the smallest number of tropical segments needed to describe uh, the tropical central pass of the contour example in dimension n, we can show that gamma n is equal to two to the n minus one because gamma n is equal to two times gamma n minus one plus one, okay? Two, central pass in dimension one plus an extra tropical segment. So this is exactly the structure that I told you about um, for the central pass of the parametric family of, uh, of contour examples. So this is how we get uh, this uh, contour example, uh, this uh, exponential lower bound on a number of uh, iterations. So uh, a couple of remarks. Uh, of course, uh, when we say that T should be large enough this requires T to be doubly exponential in N because the bit size here is already exponential, okay? Uh, and so, the, 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 yeah, the bit size is exponential. So there is no contradiction with the polynomial time uh, upper bound on the complexity of interpoint methods, of course. 
Um, of course, uh, yeah, we, we say that uh, we need an, um, an exponential number to do the n minus one iteration to go from a certain value of the objective function to another value. And this omega of one corresponds to the value of the analytic center. And the exponential lower bound still holds if we follow only a part of the central pass only. Okay, we could cut maybe the central pass going from the analytic center to maybe half of the central pass, but still we would need, of course, thanks to this inductive structure, an exponential number of iterations. So the result is actually quite robust to the parts of the central pass that we could select. So uh, let me finish with some concluding remarks. So as we have seen, the tropical geometry approach is actually useful for the analysis of interior point methods beyond the case of the log barrier, uh, the logarithmic barrier that was very particular thanks to the algebraic nature of uh, the, the central pass. And the combinatorial nature of the contour example actually demonstrates a deep connection with the simplex method on worst case instances. And it also improves the previous lower bound of Alamijon, Vinchimol, Gobert, and Josphic uh, that was uh, that corresponds to um, that was in omega of two to the n over two. Okay, here we have an omega of two to the n. So we have a better contour example. And I want I want also to mention that there there was an independent work of Zhang Li and Yue uh, where the contour example of uh, for the log barrier methods were used to show that short step self component interior input methods are not strongly polyamial. So what's next is an ongoing work uh, of Alamijon, Dadouche, Lo, Natura, and Weg on getting an exponential upper bound on the complexity of interior component methods. What I mean is that the upper bound would only depend, of course, on the number of, in, of um, numerical entries. And so somehow these results should partly close the gap between the lower bound and the upper bound that we have. Uh, we would also like to investigate the implications of these results for convex programming, especially for semi-definite programming. We think that uh, the results, the convergence result that we have for the central pass may be helpful for this purpose because it shows that somehow there are some combinatorial properties for very, very general central pass, even for convex programming. Um, we also think that it could be relevant to look at um, uh, the contour example, the application of the contour example, the cubic contour example, to other kind of problems. As we know, linear programming over these parametric LPs are related to uh, the complexity of mean payoff games, and so it might be possible that this contour example could also bring some com some lower complexity bounds for other algorithms like policy iteration, even though we already know some. Uh, lower bounds for that. And of course, one of the major questions for the following years is can we fix interior point methods? What we have seen so far is that self component barrier and interior point methods are not strong enough to uh, make the central pass go away, sufficiently go far away from the boundary. And that's why we have this log limit that can go to the boundary of, um, of the log limit of the feasible region. And so uh, it might be helpful, it might be interesting to, to, to try to build uh, better barriers uh, to avoid this kind of pathologies. Thanks for your attention. Here is the link for uh, our archive paper.